Hello, beautiful people. Welcome to the Nabis Kitchen. So today I'm bringing you Peri Peri Chicken a Rice Bowl, which we're pairing with an assortment of roasted vegetables. It's gonna be so good, friends. So let me tell you what I have done so far. We have washed our rice quickly clean until the water was completely clear. Then we added enough water to the rice to cook it. Then we seasoned it with some grated onion, about a tablespoon. We also added some salt to taste, a little bit of all-purpose seasoning, and a splash of cold-pressed coconut oil. Now it's cooking. We've also roasted some bell peppers, four medium-sized roasted bell peppers over open flame. Now, if you do not have open flame or you don't have a gas stove, you can place it in your oven and just roast it so that it gets a little bit of char in it and you're good to go. Now, we're going to cut it up and add some other ingredients to it and then we'll have our peri-peri sauce. And into the blender, they will go. Next thing is one whole onion. This is a sweet onion because peri-peri sauce really needs sweetness. So sweet onions will be your best bet just because peri-peri sauce needs that balance, okay? We're gonna have some tang, we'll have some sweetness from the onion, from the bell peppers. One of the things peri-peri sauce is known for is chilies. I have two kinds, I have scotch bonnet and I also have Fresnos. You can substitute one of these with Thai chilies. Now I'm going to remove the heads. I'm also going to remove the heat to bring that incinerating property of chilies out, all right? Because I don't want it to be too hot. I'm gonna do the same with the Fresno chilies. They both have a different flavor, you know, they both present a unique flavor and I want both of them in here. Like I said, Peri Peri sauce is known for its chili flavor. It's very chili forward, chili and pepper forward. All right, perfect. I have 10 cloves of garlic here. These are small garlic cloves. The herb of choice for Peri Peri sauce it's oregano and I have the dry one here and it's a teaspoonful. Now we're going to need black pepper. I'm going to put a whole teaspoon in there. You also want to add salt to taste. I'm going to use a teaspoon. I like the flavor of white pepper. So I'm going to add that also to my peri peri sauce, a teaspoonful. Next ingredient is a little bit of a drizzle of honey. Not too much because we don't want to overpower it with sweetness. All right, citrus is the best route to go. I'm first going to zest one, one whole lemon into it. So think of the zest as perfume for your peri peri sauce. Now we're going to introduce the tang factor or the tang element by juicing two lemons into it. If you have lime, that will also work perfectly. Now we're going to add some olive oil. This is cooking olive oil and you need about a third cup of it. We're gonna blend it with that and that's enough. All right, so I have 12 chicken drums in here, already cleaned with lots of water and some lemon juice. We're going to marinate this chicken, but first let's add some salt to it. I'm adding about half a teaspoon of salt, half a teaspoon of crushed black pepper, a little bit of chicken bouillon, 
followed by about a cup of the peri peri sauce. It smells incredible. We're going to stir it up. Make sure the chicken is well coated. Our chicken is well seasoned. Look at that. Beautiful, isn't it? Chicken is well seasoned. We're going to place it on a sheet pan and let it rest for about 20 to 25 minutes before it goes into the oven. The rest of the peri peri sauce I'm going to reduce by at least half to concentrate its flavors, which I will be using to baste the chicken at some point after it's been in the oven. That's what you do when you're trying to maximize flavors and that's what I do in my kitchen. We're going to add a little bit of oil here just to prevent things from sticking and smear it all around on your roasting pan. It's good to create a bed of any kind of vegetables. Today's choice is just onions and why? It's going to keep the chicken moist while it roasts in the oven, all right? You can use bell peppers for this as well. Now I'm going to place the chicken on strategically. And now you want to place it in the oven at 500 degrees Fahrenheit using your broil option to sear in the juices for 10 minutes. So now we have our chicken in the oven, our rice is cooking, and our peri-peri sauce, the remainder of it is also reducing to concentrate its flavors in which we will be using to baste the chicken when it comes out of the oven. Now we're going to work on our vegetables. I have some zucchini. As well as some carrots and a red bell pepper. One thing with roasting vegetables is that they can easily overcook. So prevent that, cut them into bigger chunks. So use vegetables you like. And now it's been 10 minutes, so we're going to remove this chicken from the oven and baste it. So it's just 10 minutes to sear in the juices, right? This way, the juices stay inside the chicken and not ran all the way out. So baste it with the reduced peri-peri sauce. Just imagine, the peri-peri sauce is reduced, so its flavor is heightened. So yes, best case scenario. We want an internal temperature of 165 degrees Fahrenheit for the chicken to be edible. We haven't reached that yet, so we're gonna throw it back into the oven and turn the oven now to bake. Okay, we're going to bake now at 400 degrees Fahrenheit for the next 30 minutes. And our chicken will be falling off of the bone. So what we're doing now is basting it with some more of our peri peri sauce because why not this sauce is incredibly delicious if you have extra peri peri sauce remaining continue to reduce it and it stores very well for weeks in your fridge back into the oven All right, so to season our vegetables, I'm going to create a dry rub, almost like a Cajun seasoning. And I'm going to use a quarter teaspoon each of garlic granules, onion granules, smoked paprika, curry powder, seasoned salt, and mixed herbs. I'm actually also going to add same amount crushed black pepper. Give this a swirl to mix it together and our vegetables have a perfect seasoning. Throw it on. Also, we need some oil, a couple of splashes of oil because we're roasting. So we need oil for that. 
And that's cooking olive oil. Now we're going to toss everything together and make sure everything is coated well and evenly. It's a lot of vegetables, but like I said, it's great for meal planning. So I am thinking ahead. Vegetables are now going into the oven. I'm so glad we have so many vegetables. We'll be meal planning. Place the sheet pan on the top rack and you're going to broil at 500 degrees Fahrenheit for 10 minutes. I have some fresh flat leaf parsley, also known as Italian parsley. I'm just gonna give them a rough chop and this will serve as a garnish for the chicken as well as the roasted vegetables. We will be serving soon. Finish with some flaky salt. It's good to do this. If you over season it with salt before it goes into the oven, it's going to cook in its juices. The salt is gonna pull all those juices out. A bit of parsley. So vegetables, as we know, it's common knowledge. They love to be seasoned well, right? They just taste better. Now look, we don't have a whole lot of broth that these vegetables are sitting in. And that's because we did not over season before we introduce heat to the vegetables. And that's what you want to do. You can always go and finish with your salt of choice, a table salt or a finishing salt like flaky salt before you serve, all right? So that way we prevent the vegetables from cooking or boiling in their broth. We are roasting, not boiling the vegetables. The rice is ready, fluffy, soft, no crunchy areas. Everything looks catwalk ready. Before it is time to chow down. So we start with some rice. Take as much rice as you would like. This is not for me. These vegetables, the more the better. They are robust. I love the rusticity they present with. They're sweet, savory, seasoned well. And just look at that. All right, now time for the chicken. One more chicken. Let me see here. This is a good looking one. And just look at that. Beautiful rice bowl. See how moist the chicken is? Beautiful. Vegetable. It tastes. Dinner is served. Balanced dish. All kinds of flavors going on, and you know you're gonna get all your nutrition too, all in one bowl. Mmm. The vegetables happen to be my favorite part. Just look at how well roasted they are. And the great thing about them is that they're not overcooked at all. So because we're going to be using the rest for meal planning, you don't want to overcook them because you will reheat them before you eat them. The chicken also, they are moist because they were laid on that bed of onions. The rice is fluffy. Everything looks great. It is chop time. Thanks for watching. Make it a great day and have fun, especially in that kitchen.